Hi, and welcome back. Focal Point here for talk this Thursday edition of Focal Point. Uh, I've got a couple of more items uh, generally on the family and kind of values issues. And I want to talk about submission and marriage, second half of this uh, segment. You know, the striking thing is when I was growing up, the USSR was kind of the focus of evil in the world. Ronald Reagan gave that famous speech. He was giving a speech to evangelicals in 1983, referred to the Soviet Union, the USSR, as the evil empire, as an evil empire. Stood before the Berlin Wall in 1989. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. So communism and its embodiment in the Soviet Union was, was the face of evil. Uh, in, uh, you know, for decades. Well, now that you've got this odd thing where since the uh, Berlin Wall has come down and uh, the Soviet Union has been broken up, you still have the nation of Russia and then all these satellite states that are now independent, it's been odd to see the transition in values between Russia and the United States. Now Vladimir Putin is out there defending their pro-family laws. Remember, Russia's got a law that prohibits the propagandizing of teenagers with homosexuality. They, uh, it's against the law to try to persuade a teenager to think uh, positively about homosexuality or to dabble in it or to engage in it or to experiment with it. It's against the law. You can't brainwash them. You can't indoctrinate them. You can't communicate that message to Russian teenagers without running afoul of of the law, and Vladimir Putin is out there defending it. And he is defending their law with regard to family and human sexuality as, um, well, let's see, where's he got this? It, it's like the, it's, it's the bastion of global conservatism. Uh, and so he is out there defending Russia now as the one who's carrying the banner of conservative values against the propaganda of non-traditional relations. So you've got this weird shift where now the president of Russia is promoting sexual normalcy at the same time the president of the United States is promoting sexual deviancy. Now, that's a turn of events I don't think anybody could have seen coming. You might have heard that story about that first grader who was accused of sexual harassment. Did you hear that? He's a, he, he's a first grader, six years old. He kisses a girl. He, he likes her, and she likes him. So he kissed her on the hand. And he got slapped with a sexual harassment charge. Went into his file. Got suspended from school as a sexual harasser. He's six years old, criminally. Well, they have uh, dropped the sexual harassment charge now and turned it into a misconduct charge. And you wonder why, why did the school crack down like this on this kid? He's six years old. You know, I get, uh, Debbie and I get each other anniversary cards. And one of the things I love to do, I do this almost every year. I give her an anniversary card. I'll go try to find a card. I usually give her two cards. One of them is more kind of substantive and meaningful and has all that flowery language that nobody ever really uses. So I'll get her one of those. And then I, get, I like to get her a card that has a picture of two kids embracing or kissing or holding hands or something like that because it's just a reminder of the youthfulness of love, and I just love those pictures of little kids uh, kind of sharing a hug or sharing an innocent uh, kiss, and, and that's what this is all about. This is not about sexual harassment. This is cute, is what this is, and you want to know why there's such a crackdown? Because the federal government, the federal government has threatened every school in the country. If you allow anything, any sexual harassment on your school grounds, we are going to cut off your water. You are not going to get a dime. From this administration, if you have anything that we consider to be sexual harassment. So now they're cracking down on six-year-olds giving innocent kisses to their neighbors. You know, the problem that I've always had, I don't have a problem with teachers. I want to be very, very clear about that. I don't have a problem with teachers. What My problem is with teachers' unions. That's where my problem is. My problem is with uh, education departments in our colleges and universities. Give you an example of the problem that I have with teachers' unions is the Michigan Teachers Union is trying to get a $10,000 severance package for a teacher who lost his job because he is a convicted child molester. And the child he molested was one of his students. And he did it for multiple times over multiple years. And the Teachers Union 
is trying to get this guy a $10,000 severance package. By the way, he was a male teacher, and his pupil was a male uh, student, which, again, is a reminder of the connection between homosexuality and pedophilia. Homosexuals commit sex offenses. Homo I mean, homosexuals commit uh, sexual abuses, sexual offenses against children at about 10 to 11 times the rate that heterosexuals do. And then here's another kind of values issue story. You know, I believe, this is my firm belief, I believe if you drive while drunk and you kill somebody, that you should forfeit your own life. That is, that is a case of, of such negligence and such irresponsibility that if you, out of your irresponsibility, you deprive someone else and that person's family of their life, then you must forfeit your own. That, that is what I believe is fair and appropriate. Here's a 16-year-old teen, and he comes from rich parents, and that may explain why this guy's getting off. 16 year old, 16 years old, he lives in Fort Worth. He, um, let me get to the details of the story. He and his friends were seen on a surveillance video stealing two cases of beer from a store. And his pickup with his friends in it plowed into four pedestrians, killed all four of them. He had seven passengers in his Ford pickup truck. He was speeding, and his blood alcohol level was three times the legal limit. You know what this guy got? He got probation. Killed four people because he's driving while drunk on a joyride with his drunk buddies, kills four innocent people, and he gets probation. Uh, could have gone to jail, for a, uh, to prison for a maximum of 20 years or state custody uh, anyway. So... I mean, and you look at the victims here. Brian Jennings, a 43-year-old Burleson youth minister. So he probably leaves behind a wife and a family, leaves behind students who are looking to him for spiritual leadership. Uh, Brenna Mitchell of Lillian, uh, who's 24, her life taken from her in her mid-20s. Shelby Boyles, her life taken at 21, and her 52-year-old mother, Holly Boyles, who lived near the crash site. So they've lost a sister, they've lost a daughter, they've lost a wife, they've lost a mother, and the guy gets probation. Now, um, I, I want to finish this segment. Number to call, by the way. We'll take calls in the next segment. We'll talk about anything that we've talked about. We've talked about a range of topics today. In fact, uh, Jeff and Rob were, were kind of teasing me uh, on the break that uh, this Gospel for Asia campaign, the, the, the Critter campaign, doesn't, doesn't, there's no rabbits in there. There's no rabbits for sale. you got goats, you got chickens, you got water buffaloes, but there are no rabbits. And Jeff and Rob said, well, they don't need to because you – by all the rabbit trails you pursue, you hunt down. You're chasing all the bunny rabbits in America straight to India so they can get them uh, for free. Anyway, uh, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840 is the number to call. And I want to talk in the last few minutes of this segment about what the Bible teaches about submission. Now, the the intro to this topic is a book. It's a best-selling book right now in Spain, written by an Italian, translated into Spanish. It's a bestseller. It's um, outselling a spinoff of the Hunger Games trilogy. It's outperforming Nelson Mandela's Walk to Freedom. And the title of the book by uh, an author by the name of Costanza Muriano is Get, and it's for women, for young women, Get Married and Be Submissive. That is the title of the book, Get Married and Be Submissive. And this thing is an absolute bestseller. They can hardly keep the thing in stock in Spain. And so I haven't read the book. I don't think it's been translated into English yet. I've read a number of articles about it. But the whole point is to encourage a woman to accept the leadership of her husband in the home, to honor him in that role, to support him in that role, to do whatever she can to encourage him, to build him up, to make it possible for him to succeed in whatever his occupation is, to succeed as the head of their home, and arrange herself under his uh, leadership. And, of course, this has aroused the, the, the feminist. Uh, here, here, I'll just give you one example of the counsel in the book. This is to wives. If you only do what is right for you, what you think, then you are not married to a man. You are married to to yourself. 
So he says that's narcissism, that's self-centeredness, that is selfishness. If you were determined this marriage to do what is best for you rather than what is best for your husband or for your family, then you're just married to yourself. That's not a genuine marriage at all. Instead of doing that, the author says you should submit to him. Now, this is just outraged feminists all across the fruited plain. On November 25th, which is the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, a bunch of demonstrators gathered in the city of Bilbao or Bilbo and tore up dozens of the covers of the book before throwing water-filled balloons at a blown-up picture of it. Now, the interesting thing, and then I'm going to get to just a couple of comments about submission. The interesting thing is that this is this book was published under the tutelage or the supervision of the, the Archbishop of Grenada. And they've got a sequel that's already in the works. I mean, it was already in the planning stages, being written before this thing came out. And it is a married guide for men. Same author, Marriage Guide for Men. The title of the book is Get Married and Give Your Life for Her. Get Married and Give Your Life for Her. Now, both of those book titles are exactly right. Biblically, that's the responsibility of a woman to submit herself to her husband, Ephesians 5.21. That word comes from two Greek words, one of which means to arrange and the other of which means under. So it refers to a woman when she decides to get married. Now, a woman doesn't have to get married. I mean, nobody's going to force anybody to get married. But biblically, if a woman does decide to enter into marriage, then her responsibility is to arrange herself under the headship and the leadership and the authority of her husband in the home. Support him in that role, not contest him uh, in that role, not challenge his leadership, but to support him and honor him in that role. And that's how she submits to him is by recognizing and honoring his authority. But husbands are also told to submit to their wives. A lot of people don't know that. You know, when Paul starts talking about marriage, he says to husbands and wives, submit yourselves to one another. And the way a husband submits himself to his wife is not by giving up his headship, but by giving up the right to use his headship, his authority in the home, to get his own way simply as an excuse or a cloak for his own selfishness. Focal Point, AFR Talk, back in two weeks. 